to receive confidential prayer, call, email, or text. WhatsApp or call us today up to 11.30 a.m. at 876-521-9437 or 876-877-9794. And mail callers, your number is 876-371-0898. Or you may email your requests to prayer at swallowfieldchapel.org or by text to 876-877-9794. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we say welcome. And we invite you to complete the contact card in the link below so you can connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving in these troubled times. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. You may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account. The account number is 804-161, branch number 50575. Or you may log on to swallowfieldchapel.org and click Give to make your direct online contribution. If you're making a contribution for food care packages, please indicate so. In-person and online baptism classes have resumed. In-person classes are held Sundays at 11 a.m. at the back of the sanctuary or online classes are held on Zoom at 6 p.m. To register for the online class, click the link in the description below. Meetup, the young adult-led ministry of Swallowfield Chapel is back. Join us as we continue our series, Faith Deposits. Join us tomorrow, May 15 at number 9 Swallowfield Road. Doors open at 6.30 and we start at 7. Get ready! For the Arise Labor Day Bring, Sell and Donate Yard Sale. Get rid of the things that are taking up space and find something that you really need. When? Tuesday, May 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Where? The Warehouse at number 7 Swallowfield Road. See you there. My side. We link online for the final leg of the Hand of God Bible Study on Zoom this Saturday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Top boss Derek Clark is going to take us to the finishing line. So equip yourself for the reality of life as a Christian man. Study the Bible. Mellowmen at gmail.com is the email for the link to the meeting. See you online this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. And invite a party now. This is a male-only event. Melo is the men's ministry of Swallowfield Chapel. More Couples Cook-Off takes place Friday, May 19, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. on the grounds at number 5. Come out for an exciting evening of fun and fellowship as the marriage ministry turns up the heat. The stakes are high. To confirm attendance, email familymatters at swallowfeedchapel.org. Crossroad is back from our Easter break. Teens, you're invited to join us every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at number 5 Swallowfield Road, where we're excited to kick off our new series, Proof, which explores the Gospel of John and the life of Jesus. Hope to see you this Saturday. For more information on the ministry and how you can get involved, send an email to Alan Isaacs at swallowfieldchapel.org or follow us on Instagram at Crossroad Jamaica. We can't wait to see you there. ACE classes resume on Sunday, May 21. Visit our Church Center app to register today. Join us for our Child's Month service led by our Sunday school children next Sunday, May 21 at 9 a.m. at number 9 Swallowfield Road. Our brother Alan Matthew Isaacs will be our speaker. Please be in prayer for him as he prepares to share the word. Remember to invite someone to church and if you're not able to join us for in-person service, tune into our YouTube channel. The service starts at 9 there too. Our blood drive returns on Sunday, June 4, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at number 5 Swallowfield Road. Register to become a donor today. Call the church office or email Barbara Campbell at swallowfieldchapel.org. Do you love football? Join the Swallowfield football family and play in the Christian Brethren Football League. If you're 16 years or older, come try out for the team. We train Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. To register, call the church office or email info at swallowfieldchapel.org. Calling volunteers to work in our upcoming Vacation Bible School on July 17 to 21. VBS is a day camp targeting children ages 6 to 12 years. We need volunteers for registration, admin, sports, music, Bible classes, and more. We need your help. To register to assist, please call the church office or email Catherine Preston at swallowfieldchapel.org. Well, good on Izzy. My good man, my good, my good. I feel good that you yes. guys have brought me on for this evangelism certainly, walk. Certainly, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the evangelism walk is this Saturday, 
we meet in a church at 3.30, we're mm -hmm. inviting everybody to come out. Mm -hmm. 3.30, we're having a breathing. And you know we'll be talking about you know how to how to prepare for the evangelism work, mm -hmm. and we'll be going into the crossroad area, into the emancipation area, and so on, and in our tracks, praying for people and giving people an, an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. This remind me of in you know, the 90s, the 80s, and the 90s when we used to go out there yes. every Friday, That's you know, right. to walk and turn to minister to people, day. minister to people. Yes, it's really a blessing, you know. And as a matter of fact, you know, we want all of you chapel to know that we're not going to leave them on their own because That's we. Right. That's give right. Off of the training. Yes. Thank you for bringing me on board because yes. at the training for this Thursday coming up at 6 o'clock at the believers meeting, we want to let people know line yes. by line That's and right. precept by right. precept. Precept. Just, That's right. Oh, we just talk to people and yes. feel comfortable in hearing the gospel. That's right. That's right. You know something? So, um, you want to tell us a little bit about what they need to carry, what they need to bring along in terms of tell us? Yes. So, you know, we are encouraging the people to bring out, you know, um, bring yourself out, you know. Um, come happy, come joyful, come ready to share with somebody else who is in need of hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we are encouraged you to, to come with, you know, prepare with a pen, come prepare, you know, dress ready. Now, leave the jewelry at home and so on, you know, and just come ready. Walk with a bottle of water and so on. If you don't have any water, we have water for you. But come ready, you know, come excited, come full of um, enthusiasm and ready to share. I want everyone to know that this, this is, is a Swell Field Chapel and event. event. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you as we worship together. Her children rise up and call her blessed. 
her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpassed them all. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. And happy Mother's Day to mothers all across the world. Welcome to Church Swallows. I am Nathan, and this is my mom. Stephanie. Our speaker for today is our sister Charlene Williams, and she will be speaking on the topic Mothers in Zion, Embracing Our Story in Christ. Our mission at Swallowfield Chapel is to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do this by helping people to connect, grow, and serve. That simply means we help people to connect to God and to the Christian community of faith, the church. We help people to grow as faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we empower people to serve wherever God has placed you in the world. Please don't forget to share this link with your friends and family and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come, Come let's, let's worship together. together.
swallow happy mother's day and let us pray heavenly father thank you for today thank you for your forgiveness thank you for waking us all up this morning thank you for everything that you have given us lord thank you for covering us under your blood and protecting us from all harm and evil lord i pray for the people that are sick right now in the world i hope they get better soon lord just cover them and protect them hopefully they'll get back to their families i pray for uh, everyone that has lost someone and who are grieving right now in their homes just pray i pray for them hopefully they'll get over it soon i also pray for jamaica with everything that's going on right now help us to stay strong and just to keep going lord and and last but not least thank you for all the mothers in the world because if it weren't for them we wouldn't be here right now lord in jesus name i pray and give thanks amen one to six and i'll also read verse 16. this is the genealogy of jesus the messiah the son of david the son of abraham abraham was the father of isaac isaac the father of jacob jacob the father of judah and his brothers judah the father of perez and zerah whose mother was tamar perez the father of herazon herazon the father of ram ram the father of abdab Adab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Solomon, Solomon the father of Boaz whose mother was Rahab, Boaz the father of Obed whose mother was Ruth, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon whose mother had been Uriah's wife and jacob the father of joseph the husband of mary and mary was the mother of jesus who is called the messiah this is the word of the lord
Good morning, Swala fam. Happy Mother's Day to every mother. Mother-in-law, grandmother, great-grandmother, surrogate mother. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you know the blessing from the mouths of your children and those you influence. May you stand as a representation of God's heart in the earth to love unconditionally. May you look to him as your source when you need help in the nurture of those who he has given for your care. Let us pray. Father, even now, I just thank you. I thank you for every opportunity we have to gather in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that even though we're online, we're not too far from you. Lord, as I try to share what you have placed on my own heart, I just ask you, Father, that you will plow up the hearts of those who are listening so that they will hear more about what you're saying to them and less about what I have to say. Father, do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when I asked the Lord for this message to share, Mothers in Zion came and as it unfolded, I saw where he was speaking about our story in him and the impact of mothers in the journey. So I will share a bit of my story and then I'll jump in the sections of his word. Um, today on Mother's Day, I think back to my childhood. Things were very simple then. You're a mommy if somebody calls you that. Invariably, I didn't think through the details and the nuances of who could or should be a mommy. I only knew that mommy is mommy and that was it. As children, we didn't recognize immediately the very important village of persons who also looked out for us. The children in the community, they were also part of it. For me, it was the next door neighbor, Mrs. C. We actually called her that. This is not my attempt at anonymity. She's no blessed memory. She would check in on us to keep us in line while mommy was away at work and if the helper wasn't there. She was the one who sent over half a bread when bread was scarce back in the some time ago. And it was and um, she and her husband lived, uh, it was them alone. And we were the children next door and she believed we, we needed it more. She was also a teacher and gave us all the past papers for common entrance practice. I see the mommy there. She never had biological children, but now that I think of it, for the exam drills, I'm not so sure about the thankfulness, but her heart was to help. I learned from her the ability to be present and what dedication looked like. As I grew up, there were so many others. And Mrs. B, again, no anonymity there, that's just what we called her. She was a good friend of mine until her passing at 79 years old. She was really mommy and daddy's friend, but um, she became mine too. She would just call to chat and impart some deep wisdom about life and God experiences. Her faith was of such that her doctor would marvel every time he gave her an update about the fact that her one remaining lung um, from cancer, um, she had to lose the other, was showing a spot and another anomaly. But she would say, thank you, doctor. I'm going to see what my other doctor God is saying. That woman was like a walking testimony. So much so that the doctor would tell her the results and for many years would marvel when she kept surviving. She lived maybe over 30 years with that diagnosis and kept beating the odds. I learned from her faith and kindness. Cynthia was our special gift from God in the form of a helper. She was there from I was three years old and kept all our secrets and took care of all mommy's grandchildren as well. I learned from her loyalty and love. And then another Mrs. V. She was notorious for her fruitcake and just general cooking. And she sent over pots of soup to our house on Saturdays when my father at the time was ill. He had um, cancer. She was one of mommy's friends, a good friend. She's also of blessed memory. Um, people thought she was miserable, but I really don't know what they meant. Maybe they never got any fruitcake or soup. But I learned from her generosity. My mother-in-law, she sees people, really sees them. She reaches out to people quietly and helps them in their difficult moments. I've learned from her 
how to notice people to see how to help. From my own mother, she taught me something as simple as confronting sickness and bad feeling head on and let the sickness convince me if it was real. No sickness can survive if you believe in God first and let the word of God challenge it. My mommy was a real mama bear. If you remember back in the day when you couldn't go into the departure area of the airport, but you had to leave your loved one at the door. Well, I think that was just a suggestion to my mother. She got past airport security to stand with her son of about 21 years old, big man at the time when he was on his way to travel for study. Her basis and explanation to the security was that she is his mother. She's my greatest teacher. She's strong, kind, generous, persistent. I have many stories about her, but I'm concerned for time. And also, she may not like me sharing too much. But I honor her today and call myself and my siblings blessed. My mommy loves the Lord and prays for us still and is an active part of our lives. From my mommy, I've learned strength, perseverance, and love. The word of the Lord says in Psalm 68, 6, God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. Swallowfield Chapel, in it, I found a village as well. And it can be your village, whether you have a village or not at home. That is Swallowfield in general and a connect group in particular. Though I may not be alone, as you would have heard from so far from the little tidbits of my life. I sometimes feel lonely, but having a trustworthy set of persons in a village or connect group can make all the difference. We all need help out of personal prisons of greed, entitlement, weakness, fear, pain, hurt, selfishness, and some of the mothers in our past and present are there to help along the way. When I think of that word, God has placed us in families, in circumstances that are meant to probably train us to become more like Jesus Christ. Some of these circumstances include discipline, which may not mean that all is physically fine, or that we will make perfect choices, or that God will swoop down like a shining knight when difficulties of all types are before us, or even that he will always save us from the ultimate enemy of death if it comes before us, but it means he will be with us. He will keep us. He will strengthen us. He will give us a testimony that when we put that with the blood of the lamb, we overcome. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So back to this matter of the village in our lives. The word of God says also in Matthew 13, 44 to 46, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he had found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. I'm putting forward to us all that our experiences in life and in God are treasures, fine pearls. And if this is so, then when we speak of our testimony being part of that recipe from Revelation that I just quoted to defeat the enemy, then the experiences that God has allowed in our lives form part of our testimony and they are to grow us into purpose, into Christ-like beings. It is for the development of that spiritual weapon that goes with the blood of the lamb that will strike the final blow to the enemy. So today I am inviting us to define our weapon by the experiences that we have had in God, to remember them and those that have impacted us and whether we can similarly impact others for the kingdom of God. The effectiveness of our weapon that is dependent on the level of our commitment and our obedience in Christ. 
1 Corinthians 3, 12 says, If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. All of that to say your story is not just you or about you. Your story is linked to and mixed with all the different people along the way that help to develop you into your purpose and for impacting your eternal state. So back to mother. Today's Mother's Day. So what does mother mean? Well, the Oxford Dictionary defines a mother as a female parent of a child, a person who is acting as mother to a child. So to look at look more deeply at what mother means, um, as the scripture read this morning, let's look at some women from Jesus's lineage to define motherhood. This is based on Matthew's account in chapter one of his book. Only five women were named or identified in the genealogy. I believe that five were named because there was something special or peculiar about them that requires identification. The first one, in verse three, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar or Tamar. In verse five, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. The third one, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. In verse six, David was a father of Solomon. We all know King David. And, his mo and Solomon's mother had been Uriah's wife. In verse 16, it ends up with Mary, who was a mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So let's look at each one of them in turn. Who was Tamar? That is in Genesis 38. Tamar was Judah's daughter-in-law. She was married to Judah's son, Ur. Well, he was wicked in God's sight. That's what the Bible said. According to Jewish law, if the first husband died without leaving an heir, then the next son would marry the widow that was left. So Judah allowed Tamar to marry his second son, Onan. Onan flopped too. No children. He was wicked in, God, in God's sight, and God took him out. Back in the day, God was serious. Anyway, like any reasonable person, Judah say, it can't be my son that is a problem. It must be she. But even if it's them, I can't just make she kill off the last little one too. So Judah take away himself and goes out. Tamar, Tamar get vexed and say, well, if I can't catch Quaku, I gotta catch him shut. So she dress up like a prostitute and catch Judah and got pregnant. Judah now, and finding this out, Decides, say, him going to kill her. That's what the law say. But then, him realized that if him kill her, him going to have to kill himself because he had evidence that he was a father. And he too was guilty. But out of that pregnancy, she had twins. God gave her double for her trouble. The word speaks of the wickedness of the men, Ur and Onan, and that Judah eventually marries Tamar. The Bible is silent as to whether Judah loved her or not. It only says that he did what the law required and gave her, and she had her sons. What could have been so special about this woman, except that she faced a lot of injustice? She was alone and left to be disadvantaged because of widowhood. And who knows that God has a little special spot for widows? At the end, Judah did concede that she was in fact more righteous than him. Exodus 22 verses 22 up to 24 said, You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, says God, I will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn and I will kill you with the swords and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. What does Tamar's story 
have to do with us. In case you missed it, some of us, our story is such that justice has been withheld or delayed. We're still waiting for justice, but it will surely come, says God. To the next woman in Jesus' genealogy, who was Rahab. Joshua too has her story. So Rahab was a prostitute. She lived in the wall of Jericho. Yes, in the wall. And it was massive so that people could live well in the wall. It was a huge deal when God marched down that wall. Remember, if you remember the story, all they did was march round it, round Jericho, and shout. Next thing you know, everything marched up. It was about six feet thick. Anyway, so Rahab hid the Jewish spies when they first came, so that came to spy out um, Jericho so that they could not be captured when they, when they were spying out the land. And effectively, she was a double agent. She got them to promise to save her and her family when they came, when the Jews would have come to capture the city. She ends up marrying Salmon, one of the spies. And she was Boaz's mother. The word doesn't really speak whether Rahab ever got a chance to speak with Ruth, who is the next woman in the genealogy mentioned, but Ruth became Boaz's wife. Rahab and Salmon may have had a significant influence on their son Boaz, but we don't know that. The Bible doesn't really speak. But what we know is that by the time Ruth meets Boaz, he was as kind as he was wise. Rahab's story witnesses to our hidden stories, the ones that we don't want people to know about, probably our pre-Christian life. But God shouts from his holy place that none that encounter him and accept him are unworthy. No sin is too great that he cannot cleanse it. And don't matter with the story about the unforgivable sin. Just trust God, repent, and forget about that. He will deal with it. The Holy Spirit will make up the difference. So what about Ruth? Her story is in the book of Ruth. Ruth was a girl whose loyalty knew no bounds. She was a Moabite. I know if we remember the history, Moab was the result of the incestuous relations between Lot and one of his daughters. Remember, both of them made him drunk and had sex with him. Moab was one of the children. In Genesis 19, it's there. Moab means land just short of the promised land. God cursed Moab for worshiping false god, gods and for sexual immorality. Now, given the source, we understand why. Because the source was out of our incestuous relationship. Anyway, out of Moab comes Ruth. We know the story of Ruth. She was loyal to her mother-in-law. She moved back to a land that she didn't even know and had to scrounge for food. And then Boaz sees her and she impressed him because she was loyal and she was steadfast to care for her widowed mother-in-law. Both of these women were, were widows, but there was a selfless devotion in Ruth. She followed all the rules that Naomi, her mother-in-law, had set for her, and her reward was to find Boaz and be restored as both wife and mother. This story is less about fulfillment being in the status of wife and mother, and more about God honoring selflessness and devotion this one speaks to the fact that our beginnings are not our end. Where, where we were born does not define our worth. And then now we get to Uriah's wife. That is written in 2 Samuel 11. Bathsheba was her name. And her name was not mentioned in the genealogy. And we wonder why. I really don't have the answer. But I suggest you put it on a little short list for those, for the, those of us going to heaven um, that we can ask God. If you're not sure of that position, then take the opportunity at church this morning and repent and accept Jesus Christ. And then you can join the line to heaven and you can ask him the question. So Bathsheba, I think, was a complicated case. She was at home where she should have been. 
and David summoned her to his palace. David, on the other hand, was at home when his men were away in battle. He should have been leading from the place of battle, but instead, because he was out of place, was found peeping on the woman while she was having a bath. Again, this took a little way, but then, you know, ask God about how all of this go. Put that on your short list. So he takes this woman and he sleeps with her while her husband is at war. Then he realized that she was pregnant and he calls for the man from the field to come home and chill with for a while and be with his wife. Uriah was a little bit smarter than anticipated and refused to be like David, out of place. Instead, he operated in truth and remained separated from his wife. How can he go now to relax with his wife while his colleagues, his fellow soldiers were busy trying to win a war? The examination here though is for Bathsheba. How must she have felt? Nevertheless, one can deduce that she may have been part of the deception as she didn't tell her husband of the issue. I don't even know if she knew he was there, but the point is she never tell him. David kept up the rules and sent Uriah back to the war when he realized that he wasn't going to fall into place with that plan. And sending him back meant to his death. By God's design, that first baby died. God is the one who reveals the rules to David through Nathan the prophet and discusses um, David's repentance. I wonder if Bathsheba may have been afraid and that fear could have driven her missteps in this story. But there is redemption as her contribution to Jesus' lineage is identified compared with others that are unnamed in his lineage, who themselves may have been even more virtuous than her. But this story speaks to God's mercy. Even when we have nothing to offer but association, we can be named in Jesus' story. The mercy of God is key. His mercy and his grace keeps us. He is a good God. Psalm 139, 7 to 16 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and light become night and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. All of that to say, regardless of where we are or what we think of ourselves, God is with us and he can use us. The lineage of Jesus shouts about the goodness of God in providing a lineage a story, a legacy of people with difficult lives who have impacted us for the kingdom through his word. Some of us have some hard stories where we are still struggling with some difficult areas of pain from mothers. Especially today, we remember that. I'm saying that some persons have lives filled with experiences of abuse, of deliberately inflicted pain or abandonment, of cruelty, and you wonder where in here do you fit? Well, Isaiah 49, 13 to 16 says, Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. 
But Zion says, but you say, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. But can a woman forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you, says God. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Look, God is our father, a good father, and he will not forget you. He will not forget us. Our Lord Jesus, God's only begotten son, himself came from a very checkered lineage of abandonment, prostitution, widowhood, scorn, infidelity. He is able to deliver you. He can and he will by his righteous right hand. But guess what? There are yet others outside of Jesus' direct lineage, but still a part of his story. There is one, this lady named Jael in Judges 4, a woman into whose hands the enemy, Sisera, had been, who had been the commander of the Canaanite army, enemies of Israel, for about 20 years. God put him into her hands. She was at home in the tent, cooking and cleaning and doing the regular day-to-day -day stuff. And Sisera runs in to hide from Barak, the Israelite commander of the Lord's army. He thought, Sisera thought, that he was in a safe place. And she took him in her tent. The Bible actually says there was some sort of an alliance with her tent, her husband and him. And she took him into her tent and gave him a drink of milk and covered him up. Then in verses 21 and 22 of Judges 4, it says, Then Jael, Heba's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple and it went down into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary so he died and then as Barak pursued Sisera Jael came out to meet him and said come I will show you the man whom you seek and when he went into her tent there lay Sisera dead with the peg in his temple Look, we can be about our normal day-to-day -day business and the opportunity comes to wipe out the enemy. And wipe out, wiping out the enemy don't necessarily mean physical combat. Wipe out the enemy could be an encouragement to remove enemy-type thoughts from our minds. Another lady, Hannah, her desire for a child brought her to her knees in such a way that she looked drunk to Eli, who was the high priest of the time. And her reward was Samuel. Our brokenness speaks, bringing us to a place of such desperation and humility that God responds mightily. Anna, her deep relationship with and desire for God brought ultimate fulfillment, seeing Jesus face to face. He was a baby then. The word doesn't say if she was ever a biological mother, but indicates that she was a watchman over the community and prophesied of the coming of our Lord. God honors commitment with more of himself. The widow of Nain, she saw her dead son brought back to life. He is moved, God is moved with compassion for the situations and circumstances that we endure. Peter's mother-in-law, she had a life of service. God brought renewal and restoration even from her sickbed, healing, Timothy's mother, Eunice, and grandmother, Loi, in 2 Timothy 1, 5, it says, I'm reminded of sincere faith, it's Paul that's speaking, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Loi, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. It says, faithful. The woman at the well, despite her many previous husbands and living with a man who was not her husband, the word says that Jesus needed to go that way to restore her. The word doesn't say if she had children, but it speaks more about her being the pariah in the community. She did what she could to avoid others. Example, by coming out to draw water well beyond the usual water drawing time when the sun was not out, but she was restored. 
The woman caught in adultery, she wasn't con condemned. The woman with the issue of blood, perseverance is her testimony where her encounter with Jesus brought healing. Mary and Martha. Martha always looking after the needs of people, which sometimes derailed her focus. Mary, who was so focused on God that her tears alone prompted him to immediate actions. Yes, he was planning to raise Lazarus, but it was when she cried that he cried too and immediately moved to action to raise Lazarus. This Mary is the same one that broke her alabaster box and anointed Jesus' feet. She is remembered. Many times because of an encounter with Jesus, people get all excited. All when him say, don't talk. They can't hold it. The encounter is one so wonderful that you have to talk about it. So I'm suggesting that these women impacted someone in their circle of influence. And I'm suggesting that they formed a part of someone's story. Why did we walk through this whole long history? Because we need to see ourselves in the context of God's story. Many women with many imperfections, yet useful to and used by God to accomplish greatness in the kingdom. This word of God that we have in the Bible is his testimony so far. Just so you know, perfection is not part of the terms of reference or job description. We have to get to know Jesus and allow him by the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to see people and to love them beyond our natural abilities with an encouraging word, a warm smile, a hug, a lunch money, a listening ear, a little guidance when needed, or maybe even as much as a place to stay if somebody needs it. Look, just pray and ask the Lord for an opportunity to serve. Jesus calls all of us to ministry. If we have care of children or not, our witness is what is important. I would like to challenge you not all know the joy of being either biological or adoptive or surrogate mummies, but many of us as women can be just that nurturing influence needed to change the course of someone's story. I'm suggesting that the desire to positively impact someone's life with our nurturing nature will attract that someone that we need to impact. Romans 12, 6 says, having then gifts Differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And then Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. You know, I listened to this lady, this precious lady on her eyes, and I, I didn't ask her permission to share, so I won't share her name. But she mentioned having walked through some difficult moments in life. And God sent some different, different people to encourage and to support her. As she spoke it, it just resonated in my own spirit. We need each other to thrive in the kingdom of God. Okay, so maybe you don't think that you have anything to give or to use. Well, here's another perspective. A friend of mine who was a member of this church, an active member, Avril Bailey of Blessed Memory, she was going through some tough work times and at one time and I too was going through some and she said to me, Charlene, find someone who is going through the same thing as you and pray for them and watch God in your situation. That sounds strange, not true. Well, what Avril was explaining as I understood it was the following. When you take your eyes off yourself and your problems and look to God, he will respond because that is a faith move. When you pray for someone else at the expense of trying to work out your own problems, that is great faith. And God must respond. The word says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that means with faith, we please him. You begin to understand, number three, you begin to understand more of God's heart for you in that person's situation as you walk it through with them and you open yourself to hear from God for them. And number four, the most important part, Satan flop. And not only one person get delivered, the one you're praying for, but two because God will deliver you. What is in your hand to use? Use what God has given you, whatever it is, to make the difference in someone's life. 
May God bless the mummies, all of you who have full-time care of children, teens, young adults, or even part-time or one-off influence on persons. May God bless the mummies in our stories. May we see how Jesus points us to him in all of them. Let us pray. Father, we come again, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that even now as it has gone forth, that you will impact people's lives, that you will pull them towards you, that you will open our eyes to see that you are a God of love. And when you say that we must love each other as we love ourselves, that is an action, Lord, not in our own thoughts or in our hearts, but it means actually doing something. I pray, Lord, that you will move us into action, Lord, that we will open our eyes to see people, Lord, open our hearts to receive people as you have. But indeed, God, we know that we cannot give what we don't have. So, Lord, even now, I just pray, Lord, that where people don't yet know you, or maybe they've come into some understanding of who you are, that you will move by your Holy Spirit to just plant that seed of love even more deeply into our hearts so that we would move to service. Father, we just lift up each person who is listening, Lord, that we would move to action by your Holy Spirit. We give you praise, Lord, for what you have done in our lives and what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us for a song of worship, after which I'll return with the benediction. Let's bow our heads for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. All right, so 
everyone have a happy Mother's Day. I trust that the dinner pots are already on the stove. Everyone just enjoy the rest of the day and give your mommies a day off. Have an have a awesome rest of the week as well. To receive confidential prayer, call, email, or text. WhatsApp or call us today up to 11.30 a.m. at 876-521-9437 or 876-877-9794. And mail call us. Your number is 876-371-0898. Or you may email your requests to prayer at swallowfieldchapel.org or by text to 876-877-9794. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we say welcome. And we invite you to complete the contact card in the link below so you can connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving in these troubled times. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. You may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account. The account number is 804-161, branch number 50575. Or you may log on to swallowfieldchapel.org and click GIF to make your direct online contribution. If you're making a contribution for food care packages, please indicate so. In-person and online baptism classes have resumed. In-person classes are held Sundays at 11 a.m. at the back of the sanctuary or online Online classes are held on Zoom at 6 p.m. To register for the online class, click the link in the description below. Meetup, the young adult-led ministry of Swallowfield Chapel, is back. Join us as we continue our series, Faith Deposits. Join us tomorrow, May 15, at number 9, Swallowfield Road. Doors open at 6.30 and we start at 7. Get ready! For the Arise Labor Day, bring, sell, and donate yard sale. Get rid of the things that are taking up space and find something that you really need. When? Tuesday, May 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Where? The Warehouse at number 7 Swallowfield Road. See you there. My side. We link online for the final leg of the Hand of God Bible Study on Zoom this Saturday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Top boss Derek Clark is going to take us to the finishing line. So equip yourself for the reality of life as a Christian man. Study the Bible. Mellowmen at gmail.com is the email for the link to the meeting. See you online this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. And invite a party now. This is a male-only event. Mellow is the men's ministry of Swallowfield Chapel. More Couples Cook-Off takes place Friday, May 19, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. on the grounds at number 5. Come out for an exciting evening of fun and fellowship as the marriage ministry turns up the heat. The stakes are high. To confirm attendance, email familymatters at swallowfeedchapel.org. Crossroad is back from our Easter break. Teens, you're invited to join us every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at number 5 Swallowfield Road, where we're excited to kick off our new series, Proof, which explores the Gospel of John and the life of Jesus. Hope to see you this Saturday. For more information on the ministry and how you can get involved, send an email to Alan Isaacs at swallowfieldchapel.org or follow us on Instagram at Crossroad Jamaica. We can't wait to see you there. ACE classes resume on Sunday, May 21. Visit our Church Center app to register today. Join us for our Jazz Month service led by our Sunday school children next Sunday, May 21 at 9 a.m. at number 9, Swallowfield Road. Our brother Alan Matthew Isaacs will be our speaker. Please be in prayer for him as he prepares to share the word. Remember to invite someone to church and if you're not able to join us for in-person service, tune into our YouTube channel. The service starts at 9 there too. Our blood drive returns on Sunday, June 4, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at number 5 Swallowfield Road. Register to become a donor today. Call the church office or email Barbara Campbell at swallowfieldchapel.org. Do you love football? Join the Swallowfield football family and play in the Christian Brethren Football League. If you're 16 years or older, come try out for the team. We train Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. To register, call the church office or email info at swallowfieldchapel.org. 
calling volunteers to work in our upcoming vacation Bible school on July 17 to 21. VBS is a day camp targeting children ages 6 to 12 years. We need volunteers for registration, admin, sports, music, Bible classes, and more. We need your help. To register to assist, please call the church office or email Catherine Preston at swallowfieldchapel.org. Well, good, man. Well, good, good. I feel good that you yes. guys have brought me on for this evangelism certainly, walk. Certainly, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the evangelism walk is this Saturday. We're meeting at church at 3.30. We're inviting everybody to come out. 3.30, mm -hmm. we're having a briefing. And, you know, we'll be talking about, you know, how to, how to prepare for the evangelism work. Mm -hmm. And we'll be going into the crossroad area, into the emancipation area and so on. And in our tracks, praying for people and giving people an, an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. This reminds me of in you know, the 90s, the 80s and the 90s, when we used to go out there yes. every Friday. That's you know, right. To walk and minister to people, people, minister to people. Yes. It's really a blessing, you know. And as a matter of fact, you know, we want to all of you in chapel to know that we're not going to just leave them on their own because That's we... Right. Right. That's right. Oh, for the training. Yes. Thank you for bringing me on board because yes. at the training for this Thursday coming up at 6 o'clock at the believers meeting, we want to let people know line yes. by line That's and right. preset by right. preset. preset. Just, That's right. Oh, just talk to people and yes. feel comfortable in hearing the gospel. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you want to tell us a little bit about what they need to carry, what they need to bring along in terms of, tell us. Yes. So, you know, we are encourage the people to bring out, you know, um, bring yourself out, you know. Um, come happy, come joyful, come ready to share with somebody else who is in need of hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we are encouraged you to, to come with, you know, prepare with a pen, come prepare, you know, dress ready. Now leave the journey at home and so on, you know, and just come ready. Walk with a bottle of water and so on. If you don't have any water, we have water for you. But come ready, you know, come excited, come full of um, enthusiasm and ready to share. I want everyone to know that this, this is, is a Soil Field Chapel Endorse event. event. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you as we worship together.